Greetings and welcome to the Place to Be Oshkosh September edition. This also is a very special show, not only because of my guests, they are special, but also because this is the start of our third year of doing the Place to Be Oshkosh. So we've made it through two years and this is the start of our third. Could not have done it without the support of our sponsors. So once again, a big hats off to COTS on Transitional Programming for being a sponsor of this show and also letting me have the time to promote and to do this show for our community. And also then Karen and the wonderful staff at the Oshkosh Herald, which is a great community newspaper. If you want to know what's going on, uh, get the Oshkosh Herald. And then also set design by Brian at Ubloom. Um, very busy young man, um, but he is, you have to go into a shop. You have to go into a shop and see everything he has. Um, this is only a sampling here of, it's September, so it's that kind of awkward month where stuff is still blooming, but people want to think about fall, so um, go see Brian at Ubloom. Where can you see us? Um, our show, thank you crew again, our show is on Spectrum Channel 2, Oshkosh Media Life TV. You also can see us on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and also just go to YouTube and put in Oshkosh Media or The Place to Be, because I need the likes, people. I need, <laughs> I need you to like, to like the show. No, just kidding, but like the show anyway. Um, but those are great places where you can see us also. Um, I just wanted to do a couple updates for us. Um, besides this being our third year, um, I wanted to talk about volunteers at COTS. We have volunteers at COTS. We have people that come in and do gardening. We have people that come in and do cleaning, rearranging, office work. Um, we also have a meal ministry. And that sounds so overpowering. You say meal ministry. Um, basically, people cook a meal for our residents. So when they come home from work, and all of our residents do work, um, they have a meal waiting for them. But there's also other ways you can serve. Sometimes it's a staple. Uh, ministry. I don't mean like a staple, like a stapler, but I mean providing staples for our residents. They go through a lot of bread and peanut butter and jelly and margarine because they pack their lunches um, and take them to work. So that's also another way um, that the community can get together and volunteer is by not only donating meals for our residents, but also donating the staples that we need for our pantries or our refrigerator. And if you're interested in volunteering with COTS, the time commitment is up to you. You set the days, um, the hours that you want to volunteer. We'll gladly take the help. There's a lot that we want to do. As I talked about last month, we're expanding. We're going to have 20 rooms now available instead of 10, but it takes time and it takes effort and it takes work and it takes volunteers. Um, Stay tuned, we're going to go to a commercial break and then we'll be back with our wonderful guests um, that you'll get to meet. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to our September edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh. I'm here with um, some guests that I know, I've know i known throughout the years very well, um, Michelle and Ryan. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves and what your role is at the food pantry? Yeah, I'll start. Uh, my name is Ryan Rasmussen. I'm the executive director of the Oshkosh Area Community Pantry. Uh, I've been there now for a year and a half. Can wow. you believe it? See, yeah. time does I fly. Know. Time does <laughs> fly, yes. Mm -hmm. Since the last time I came and saw you, yes. I was just brand new, I think, at that point. So, yeah. I'm Michelle Hammett. I'm one of the volunteers at the Food Pantry. I'm a retired HR professional and bored to tears. So I wanted <laughs> to find an opportunity and the Food Pantry. I knew, I knew Ryan okay. from prior lives, I guess. Yeah, prior things. And uh, so he snagged me in and it's been fun. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. That's not the only thing you do in our community, is it? Uh, no. 
What, where else do you volunteer? <laughs> um, I'm a member of the Oshkosh Area Women's Association. We raise money and give it away um, through our style show and various events. I'm also a co-director of the Miss Oshkosh Scholarship Program, which provides scholarships to young women to continue their education. And then, because I was an HR professional for so many years, I kind of volunteer my expertise, if you will, to several nonprofits in the in the community. So. But and I've known you because of the Miss Oshkosh yes. pageant too, because yes. of of working together to give mm -hmm. bags for the judges and to mm -hmm. support and mm -hmm. and um, when we used to do the Day of Caring, the yes. when I used to be the chair of it, the girls always came mm -hmm. and entertained. They say the singers were really easy to do. It was the dancers that we. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, yes. You can't just say get up and dance. <laughs> you know. Right. But the the point that I was trying to make is. You want someone to volunteer, you pick a busy person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. and again, I said this on the last show, but you can tell that you like what you're doing mm -hmm. just by your facial expressions, both mm -hmm. of you. It's so yeah. much fun. Um, it, you, you know, the, what I like about it is um, you, you can set your own schedule. It's not like a part-time job. He's not a taskmaster. <laughs> I am his taskmaster. <laughs> um, but you set your own schedule. It's a two-hour shift. And the two hours oh. go by so fast, I usually end up staying for a second two-hour shift because I'm having so much fun. See? See? <laughs> and I mentioned that in my August show, and you probably feel the same way too. There are sometimes I don't want to leave my job yeah. because I don't want to miss out on something that's mm -hmm. going on. And I think mm -hmm. that tells you that it's a really cool job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And I will have to say about the volunteers, when I go there for COTS, they're always so nice, so friendly. Mm -hmm. The last time I was there, there was a young girl a young girl, I don't know if she was training, mm. polite, nice, helpful. It was mm -hmm. like, yeah. this is our future. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be biased, John, oh. but I mean, we do have the best volunteers yes. in, in the community, okay. but I'm biased. We'll let okay. you duke it out amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, just, well, we'll just have to start sharing. And there is there one. You go. There is another one in there, too, that, there that yeah. goes all over Definitely and, share, does. and yeah. shares, too. So I was looking at some of the pictures. Well, here the, the staff is good volunteering because we're talking about it. To volunteer, um, it says it's as easy as one, two, three. I love this graphic. I think that is so cool. So if somebody wants to volunteer, um, should they uh, go online? Uh, yeah, for us, it's really, really simple. And we try to keep it as simple as possible. And so for anybody that might be interested, if you just uh, go to our website, oacptoday.org uh, backslash volunteer, uh, there's a volunteer application that's right online. Uh, mm -hmm. You can fill it all out right online. Uh, and as soon as you're done filling it out, it's going to automatically prompt you to do just some quick little training pieces. Wow. Um, so there's a little video that, uh, that we have all of our volunteers watch. And it's really more of just a how-to, like how to get to work, where do I go to sign in, where do I do all the different things as a volunteer. Uh, and then from there, it takes you right into our uh, software system that allows you to be able to schedule your own shifts. So mm -hmm. in that software system, really? we, mm -hmm. can, we can certainly put in how many hours that we need, the different jobs that might be available, uh, mm -hmm. and the volunteers at that point are able to just select whatever shifts and whatever times are best for them. So who designs and manages it? Uh, so the software that we have is through Better Impact, but uh, our operations manager, Maggie, right now yep. is the one that uh, really oversees okay. all of that activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's good to have a person doing that that knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That is really forward thinking. But it's so easy to do. Okay. You just go online, you pick the day, what you want to do, like I like doing the back room and stocking, okay, um, because I like the busy work. <laughs> <laughs> so I do not have to call one of my teen friends to say, "How do I do this?" <laughs> like I have to do with my watch, yeah. my Fitbit, and all that right, other stuff. It's really, right, okay. but there's a kids' corner. There's uh, there's a, a meet attendant. There's um, registration um, as the guests come in, checking them in. So if you've got a little computer knowledge, um, it's very okay. easy to do. Um, but I'm telling you, it goes by so fast. It's like, I oh, bet. time to leave already? Oh. Especially because you have all those people there shopping and everything. Right, yeah. so. right. And okay. they're very, they're very grateful that you know you're there to help and and guide them through the the right. store and and um, answer any questions they have as okay. well. Yeah. So on the screen, it does talk about um, volunteering, yeah. but it also says donate. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, we've seen just some dramatic increases over the last, you know, six, seven months. Um, and I think there's a lot of factors that, that have played into that. Um, and so right now we are, we are seeing just an enormous amount of uh, new registrants and new guests that are shopping with us and a lot of guests that maybe haven't visited us in a long time 
are now starting mm -hmm. to come back um, and, and really almost over double. As you can see on some of the pictures right now, um, this is just some examples of what our pantry looked like even just six or seven months ago. Uh, you know, a lot of really great full shelves, you know, a lot of variety, just a lot of things uh, that guests are able to, to come through and select uh, as their choices. But, but this is an example right now of what we're dealing with. Um, you know, because of how busy we are, um, you know, we just have a lot of empty shelves and we just have a lot of empty space that we're looking for a lot of different needs. So um, mm -hmm. part of it is we're really asking the community to help get involved with us if okay. possible. Uh, and we talk about donations in a variety of ways. You can either be a donor of food, so hosting a food drive, uh, maybe uh, think about, you know, doing something at work, maybe, you know, individually if you just want to go to the store and grab some items. Um, being a donor of funds, uh, and so maybe money is just easier, and so mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. money is really great for us because it allows us to be able to go purchase some of the things Which that we normally don't see in, in right. donations. Mm -hmm. um, or being a donor of time, and that's where volunteerism really comes okay. into play. Mm -hmm. um, so those are our three avenues that we really try to focus on, especially right now as we're seeing such a dramatic increase okay. in guests. Mm -hmm. and, and I just know from being involved with the food pantry too, when the post office would do their drive and the mm -hmm. Boy Scouts would do their drive, people would say, well, yeah. that's going to last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll last. Yeah. How long does it normally last? Yeah, we just had um, Stamp Out Hunger not too long ago yeah. uh, and the Boy Scouts not too long ago. They were both in the same month. Um, all of that food that came in, and that was roughly about 9,000, maybe 9,500,000 9, pounds of food. Um, so it's a lot of food that comes in. Um, we pretty much got through all of that food in about a week, week and a half. Say that again. Yeah, in about a week, week and a half, we went through just about all mm -hmm. of that food. I'll give you another example. Um, uh, so just the other week, uh, I was helping with our inventory manager in, in bringing in a bunch of pallets. And um, we had about 20 to 25 pallets worth of food that all came in. Uh, all 20 to 25 of those pallets went out in one day. That is just, and there's a pallet. Yep. So you can see. That's, I don't know who that girl is, never met her before. <laughs> no, don't know who she is, yeah. never met her, don't yeah. know. Where is she today because she volunteers all over exactly the community. Right. But she loves you guys a lot Absolutely. and promotes you guys a lot. Yeah. But when you think about that, people, I guess people can't comprehend. Um, last month's show was talking about homelessness and people yeah. can't comprehend what they go through and what they need. Mm -hmm. But the same thing with, with food yeah. and being a shortage. I, it's, mm -hmm. it's sad. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. And I guess I never knew that you guys went through that much. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I should know because your lines are long. How we you, are long, yeah. How do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it's definitely a delicate balance. Um, you know, right now we'll, we've heard stories that some of our lines will start as early as 6 o'clock in the morning, even on a Monday when we don't open until yeah. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <sighs> mm -hmm. um, so we'll have folks that will, that will spend some time with us and spend most of the day with us waiting in line for us to open. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, you know, when, when folks are facing food insecurity, uh, one of the things sometimes that they're willing to give up is time, knowing that in the end there's going to be, there's mm -hmm. going to be some mm -hmm. food at the end of it, right? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely see some of those long lines okay. that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I talk about, you know, just the, just the need and, and, you know, and how busy we've been, just to put this in frame of reference, uh, when I first got to the pantry, we were doing anywhere from, you know, 13, 14, 1,500 families a month. Um, we're doing anywhere now about 2,600 or more. Mm -hmm. um, so we've over doubled wow. uh, the amount of amount of guests that are coming through our doors um, right now. So what what do you think that is? Is is it because food share cut back? Yeah. Or what what's the couple couple of different things? Um, one, obviously, inflation is high, right? The cost of mm -hmm. everything is is through the mm -hmm. roof, right? No matter what it is, groceries, gas, um, rental assistance, or housing. I mean, all, everything is through the roof. Um, and the other piece is, is the food share side. You know, when the government decided that they were going to roll back food share benefits to pre-pandemic mm -hmm. levels, um, which wasn't a surprise. I mean, we all knew that this was going to happen. Right. Um, I, think, I think we could all argue maybe the timing with which it happened. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, when they rolled back food share benefits, um, as an example, a senior who's on a fixed income during COVID was making anywhere from $230 to $250 worth of food share benefits a month to be able to go spend on groceries. Okay. Right now, that same person is getting twenty dollars a month, and so, mm -hmm. you know, having okay. close to two hundred dollars, you know, cut out of somebody's budget, well, folks yes. are now now having to figure out where they budget differently, right? right? right. And well, having and to make some especially when it's exacerbated by higher inflation, higher prices in general. So, yeah. mm -hmm. it's a double whammy, yet you know, for those who can mm -hmm. least afford it. Yeah. So. And and you're not sitting in your office. 
<laughs> you know, some executives just sit in their office yeah. and watch the, as the world goes by. You're not. You're a volunteer out there. Mm -hmm. So do you get, I remember when COVID first hit, people were embarrassed to ask for help, maybe because they were taking their grandchildren or children back in their home and they needed the help and didn't mm -hmm. know where to turn. Are you seeing that with some of your clients too, that they're really humble? And I remember people saying to us, somebody else needs it more. I'm not gonna sign up because somebody else needs it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we have some really, really great stories in the pantry um, with with folks who are willing to give for others. And I think those are some of my favorite stories. Um, you know, we'll have guests that will come through. You know, we have limits on our shelves of, of how much a person can take. Um, and some of my favorite interactions are where guests say, oh, I don't need this much. Here you go. You can have it. Mm -hmm. And I love that piece and mm -hmm. that interaction with our guests. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think each individual guest is is different in how they in how they view coming to a pantry. And I think the best thing that we can do, not only as a staff and volunteers, is make sure that they have the best possible experience when mm -hmm. they come, right? Mm -hmm. Let's not talk about this as being a pantry. Let's just talk about this as a normal grocery store because that's what we are. Mm -hmm. And there are the uh, smiling volunteers, which mm -hmm. you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. our, our crew is great. Uh, what you were just talking about, they're there to greet. Yeah. Right. And and I've had that experience there too where they'll say, hey, did you see this? Did you get your limit on this? It's just, mm -hmm. you have a good group. Yeah. Do you know how many volunteers? Yeah, so generally on a weekly basis, we'll need anywhere from about 80 to 90 volunteers every week. Okay. Um, in our yeah. pool, in our software system, I mean, we have about over 300 registered. But, yeah. you know, we treat a volunteer, you know, if you donate one hour a week or you donate 40 hours a week, <laughs> we treat them all the same. So. Um, yeah, we've got we've got quite a crew. I want to earn my T-shirt. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> and those are really stunning T-shirts. Yeah. Oh, Vic says go. volunteer on the yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Nice. and it goes with I the gold with pride. and the tablecloth. <laughs> yeah. And you also know as you look at the screen how thin you guys look it's because perfect. the black we're blends we're blending in. in. I know. Yeah, the blends <laughs> in. I the, love the it. first show that I did it was black. All you could see, I was wearing all black. All you could see was my head bobbing around. So. Yeah, that's but fantastic. But you guys look really good, and I, I do love yeah. the shirts. I think they're cool. Yeah, and right. it's it's it it identifies you, so guests are more easily um, able to come up and ask you, "Do you have?" more grapes um, right. you know we're we're checking them as fast as they come in um, but we'll go back and look for them or you know the milk is out they'll help us say hey the milk is out so oh, we'll go back and yeah. get so is that something new did you always have shirts mm -hmm. you did yeah we had some yeah we definitely did um, but they're more stylish now well, thank you for I'm that, I, for that, that. I, yeah that I <laughs> Wow. Yeah, they are definitely new. Yeah. But I think you're right about that. It's like it's kind of like when you're at Home Depot and someone comes up to you thinking you're a staff person <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and wants you to know something. At least we now know who who to go yeah. to. Oh, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So, but it, it it's 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 fun. You get you get to you know help the guests if they need. Um, um, I remember one of my first times because I'm a I'm a fairly new volunteer, um, and one of my first times um, I got called up by the front and I thought oh my gosh what have I done and um, they wanted me to escort a, a guest that was in a scooter and then needed someone to push oh. her cart reach for things that kind of thing that was the best day ever it was and then they were so appreciative and and I think you know as with anything 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to have people that are so grateful they're mm -hmm. they're thankful that you're there volunteering um, you know they're grateful that they have the opportunity to shop there so mm -hmm. um, it was a real you know feel-good story for me and what I love about our volunteers and Michelle and all of our volunteers is no matter what they will always go above and beyond for our guest I mean staff mm -hmm. will do the same too mm -hmm. but for mm -hmm. some reason it just feels like it's more impactful when it's a volunteer who's giving their time right mm -hmm. and, and we have all kinds of these types of stories that happen right I mean I can tell you another story of another volunteer who, uh, you know, there was a guest that came in, the little the little niece or the little granddaughter, um, it was her birthday, she didn't think that they were gonna be able to have a birthday cake. Our volunteer went in the back, made sure that they found a, a birthday cake, got the candles, got all of the things for the kid, mm -hmm. lit the candles, brought it out. We had a little birthday celebration for the kiddo right oh in the gosh. pantry. And I just, I'll never forget the look of that grandma or, or the aunt or whoever it was. Mm -hmm. And just with tears in her eyes, she just had to deliver the mm -hmm. message to that kiddo that she didn't think that they were going to be able to have a birthday. 
And for us to be able to do that, and for the mm -hmm. volunteers to just go out of their way to make sure that that kid felt mm -hmm. special. And now I mean, we, we have birthday bags. Time. Yeah, and now we have birthday bags, that so we do it all so the time. Cool. Like, oh. What are all these big blue bags in the back? And are we supposed to take them apart or whatever? And they talked about it. It's um, a birthday in a bag, um, cake mix and frosting and and sprinkles, decorations, candles, oh um, ready to go. So when when the wonderful ladies at checkout um, know that there's a birthday, we'll run back and get one of the birthday bags for them. And that's a cool concept yeah. to yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Just like um, I visited a couple times before is, is the people who put the bags together of items that because sometimes you don't know what this item should go with yeah. in this one. Mm -hmm. And to put those together as like a supper or a meal. Yeah, the individual mm -hmm. recipes. That, that's, a really, that's a really cool idea, yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. Neat. So you guys are adapting. And I would also say, too, there have been some food pantries. I've been across the state where if somebody came in on a scooter, they would not accommodate them. They would mm -hmm. probably say, no, this is our policy. You have mm -hmm. to do this. For you guys to be that quick to think about it and to do it is, mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think wow. the biggest thing is just breaking down barriers. I mean, life is hard right. enough, Jeff, yes. right? I mean, right. life is hard enough, Yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. so we don't want to make that shopping experience any more difficult than it needs mm -hmm. to be. You know, it's just, there's no yeah. reason for it. Yeah. And as you, you know, you're approaching the winter months, um, yeah. we, we have always been very fortunate throughout the summer that we also got fresh produce, um, excess produce from farmers and, you know, there were zucchinis coming out of our ears. <laughs> but now our growing season is coming to an end. Yes. So what's that going to mean? What's mm -hmm. it, what am I going to be, you know, checking in, in the produce in the back yeah, area and stocking the shelves? So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a challenge. Yeah. We talked about the birthday bags. Let's talk mm -hmm. about children then in the school pantry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. It is definitely important, especially now being September. Kids are back to school, so parents rejoice. Yeah. Kids are back to school. Yes. <laughs> um, it's like, where did the summer go for us? But yeah, they're, they're back to school. Yep, exactly. Uh, um, and so uh, one of the just great programs that we do, we partner directly with the Oshkosh Area School District to help supply um, some easy, ready-to-eat foods for all the kiddos that are in the school district. Um, and uh, some of the alternative learning environments as well, some of the STEM uh, classes and some of the STEM uh, resource schools that are, that are in town. And what we'll do is on a weekly basis, we'll package up fresh fruit, so apples, oranges, bananas, uh, and also some fruit bars and granola bars. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure that we send those to the school district. And then we'll work directly with the social workers and the guidance counselors in each of the each of the schools who will help facilitate mm -hmm. and make sure that the kiddos that really do need those products mm -hmm. uh, are mm -hmm. able to get them. So we hope that they can be meal fillers. Uh, a lot of the schools uh, have either free or reduced lunches and yep. breakfasts already. Um, so we hope that this can be, um, you know, meal fillers in between in between those meals, and then also uh, some food that they can take home mm -hmm. with them uh, mm -hmm. at night and on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But all of this takes coordination. Mm -hmm. Sure does. Which I find amazing. Yes. So how how big? We talked about volunteers. How big is your staff? So your staff, staff is four people strong. I am included in that. Um, we truly are ninety nine percent run by volunteers. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have our volunteer core, there was no way that we could do what we do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way that a staff of four could do all of this. Mm -hmm. And so um, being able to have the volunteers to come in to assist. Um, it's just really, really beneficial for us. And, and there's just no way we could do it without them. We just really couldn't. And it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think so. Maybe I'm strange. But but I I look forward to it. I keep telling Ryan, because um, I usually volunteer on Mondays, because that's the start of the week. It's the busiest. Okay. All the pallets that come in over the weekend, we have to hurry and get through all of those. And I, I always tell Ryan, I am so excited on Sunday night, I can't even go to sleep because I know on Monday I'm going oh to gosh. the food pantry. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you also know you're going to be busy because there's nothing yes. worse than a board volunteer. Yes. You know, to yes. say, I have nothing to do or yes. it's not yeah. meaningful. So that's really... I mean, it gets, you, it gets you out of the house. It gets you going. It's active. Um, but we also have jobs where if you need to sit, you can sit. Yeah. Um, but for me, it... it Moving around, helps doing all me the good burn things. some of my excess energy. <laughs> okay. Are you wearing your Fitbit at all times? No, I don't even own one. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid it would. <laughs> oh, that, that oh. it would probably explode. <laughs> yes. Well, that would be such a good feeling, wouldn't it? Be to actually, <laughs> wouldn't Fitbit? it? Yeah. Yeah. I to diverse. I, we were at Walt Disney World, and uh, my Fitbit went off. It said you've met your goal, and it was closing at nighttime, and I rejoiced 
so much <laughs> that I fell on the ground and hurt my knee. Oh, so no. so oh, I can see no. what you mean about a fit, a oh, fit bit, but yeah. I was rejoicing at those milestones. But I imagine you guys are always busy. You're always right. running. Yeah. You're always right. stacking. Right. Well, in my in my work life, I was juggling multiple balls in the air all the time. And when I retired, it was like, OK, now what do I do? Um, I'm not a happy retiree. Um, I need to keep busy. Sick, yeah. okay. I need to keep busy. Um, but I learned at a very early age from my parents about volunteering. We lived in a small town. They were involved in everything. Exactly. I didn't know anything different. So, oh, this is what you do, you know. So, Which I found out when I started my first show, Helping Hands. We would ask people, um, did you ever volunteer? And they would say no. Yeah but they're involved in their school, they're involved in their church. Yes. It was just a way of life. They didn't yeah. even they didn't even consider that volunteering. Right. And right. so I see what you what you mean yeah. by what you're saying. It's just a way of your it's life. It's helping. It's just helping. Yep. Yeah. So we're winding down. What do you want to stress? Uh, well, first and foremost, I definitely want to stress, uh, if there's anybody that's facing food insecurity, please come and see us. Uh, we're in mm -hmm. the St. Vincent de Paul building. Uh, if there's anybody that needs uh, some extra groceries or need some mm -hmm. extra food, please and make sure that you come route. and see us. We are on the bus route, okay. yes, so please make sure that you come and see us. That's okay. first and foremost. But also, please, 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 if you're considering on making a donation this year, consider us uh, and be a donor of food. Be a donor of money or be a donor uh, as a volunteer and give up some time. Um, I know that there are a lot of nonprofits that are in this community, and there's a lot of nonprofits that are doing a lot of great mm -hmm. work. Um, but if you have some extra time, you have some extra resources, uh, please think about us, because uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we're seeing over double the number of guests that we, that we have experienced before, and so uh, the need is great for us right now. And you know, it used to be, churches used to do um, like showers for kids and all that, because um, grandparents mm -hmm. love to buy kids clothes, but they may don't have any grandkids, and so they would do a shower and donate it mm -hmm. to an agency. People could do the same thing mm -hmm. with food, do a mm -hmm. food shower, or Absolutely. if you don't know what to buy your parents or grandparents, mm -hmm. give give money in their name to the food pantry or yeah. do mm -hmm. a collection for the food pantry. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and even on our website, we've got some uh, examples of some things that we're looking for. Oh. Uh, our program manager actually developed a really, really cool program, so every month we're featuring different items, uh, just to make it fun, not only for the donor, but also it's based on, you know, the needs that we need as it, as it comes throughout the season, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, take a look right now. I mean, September is Super Bowl, uh, so make sure that you bring all of your canned goods and all of your soups oh, in. Yeah. Uh, I get it. And so, okay. Yep, yep. And so uh, make Very sure creative. that you, yep, so all of your favorite canned goods, make sure that you bring those in because uh, those are yeah. some of the things that we're featuring this year so, or this month. And what about you? What do you want to say? You haven't said much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought her, you know? I know, and, 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 uh, you know, and, and afterwards we'll just talk about cots and volunteering. No. There you go, perfect. <laughs> but that's perfect. The kind, you're the kind of person that every agency wants yeah. because you're good yeah. PR for them. Yeah, yeah, and just get up and do something. It's, you can, two hours, two hours a week. I like doing four hours a day some <laughs> days, but it's very rewarding. I, I have such a good feeling when I'm done. Um, and it, it doesn't take a lot of time, and your hands can do so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your hands and your heart. Mm -hmm. So is there, someone, is there someone to show you what to do until mm -hmm. you know? Until you oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. We have lead volunteers. You do? I okay. guess. Yep. That's yep. That what we call lead them. Volunteers. Lead volunteers. Yep. And we ask them many times <laughs> during the course of our show, what, what about this? Okay. And the fun thing about it is when we go through the food, we try not to waste any. Mm -hmm. So we have a turtle lady that comes and gets what we don't put on the shelves and feeds turtles. And we have a oh. compost lady yeah. that sorts through what the food is, the waste food, and they take it. And, and rumor has it she's got the best compost around. <laughs> so oh, I bet. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, you guys have really seriously been a joy because you can, you can tell in your eyes and faces that you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you're doing something great for our community. So I appreciate that very much. So um, please connect with Michelle and Ryan. Their information's on our screen, too, if you want more information about donating. Thank you again for making the September show simply wonderful. Um, this is the place to be Oshkosh, our September show, the start of our third year. So thank you for joining us, and have a great day. <laughs>